right. So looks like we have winner side pretty established. Um, let's see. Now we have K9 versus Nitro. Yeah, I sat down two matches ago, K9 versus XX, and that was a 3-0 in favor of K9. But it was close games, and then Nitro just took out y YMCA, also in a 3-0. So both of them with a full head of steam. And, um, and yet again, on the loser's side for top eight, we have Our Money and Wes versus Paper and the winner between uh, Rival and Bastkamp. Okay. I'm interested right now in this winner's final match. Like I said, both of them just won 3-0. K9 didn't use Sheik. He's been using Sheik here and there, but he used all Wolf but versus X-Axis Inkling. But um, versus um, Richter Belmont, I can see Sheik being pretty good in this matchup. I mean, definitely with the Belmonts, you want a fast character to do zone break, so uh -huh. I could see how Sheik could be a better pick over Wolf. Sure. But I can definitely see if the Sheik loses game one, he might switch over to Wolf just so he can have that raw kill power. Of course. And yeah, as you say that, Nitro does have a slight percent lead, and he's been doing so well. Uh, he has full momentum round. He literally just finished his winner semis match, and he was going. He's playing on PS2, two of those three games. And uh, yeah, his Richter is scary. Oh yeah, and I feel like the bad thing about the Sheik matchup is that no, like she can get in, but even if she does get in, unlike characters like DK or like heavy grapplers, that like once they get in, they do like stupid amounts of damage. Mm -hmm. Sheik can hit you for like a 20 hit combo, and all of a sudden you're at like 18 percent. But ooh, that up smash read, like good catch on the bouncing fish. Yeah, he's been doing very well covering the high recoveries. He got it with up air last set, and that time with up smash. Now let's see what type of extra credit you get. Nice downward angle back air. Ooh, I like Almost. the option there from K9 right there, that going for that up smash. But unfortunately, not going to be able to quite find its mark. But yet again, uh, Nitro is just really keeping Sheik in the corner and not letting her get in at all. I'm not going to lie, this Richter Belmont is so smooth. The, uh, angled, the angled aerials, the, the way he's just weaving in and out, trying to go for these frame traps. I don't, I don't know if K9 just has the experience. Who does have the experience for a Belmont play like this, you know? I mean, really, in SoCal, it's just... It's Nitro, Nitro, it's Nitro <laughs> and uh, T3 Dome. Okay. They're the two Belmont players? Yeah, they're the two Belmont players. But T3 Dome kind of very rarely shows up. He's a UCI player, so he shows up to the UCI tournaments and the occasional, like, NSM. Gotcha. Oh. Look at him. Just all over the place. And right now, he's just doing his best to keep his first stock alive. And that jab's not going to do it. Long recovery. Oh, and not okay. quite. Yeah. Yet again, like that close, but not quite. And I believe, like, it's so stupid. Like, the if you angle your your whip up, like, you actually get more tether range on it. Sure. So it's one of those things where, like, if a Belmont has to up to recover, like, they're probably dead. Yeah, right there, I think he was just afraid K9 was going to jump off stage. But it's okay, 134% right now on K9. Uh, Belmont, Richter Belmont gets killed with a multitude of things here. Let's see what uh, what Nitro goes for. I mean, at this point, he just needs one tipper whip at any at any of his moves, like right. up tilt, uh, forward air, back air. Even forward tilt probably would kill at the ledge. Up B, not going to kill great DI from K9. You saw the way he shot laterally. That, that was very good DI. Okay. I mean, that's the really hard thing about playing the Belmonts is that unless you get that fully water to forward smash confirm, you're not killing until like 180, 200%. Right. And the fourth throw might kill. It does. Wow. That kills confidently. So right. once again, Richter with a decent lead is where Richter wants to be. Because now he can play his game. He has no reason to approach. And right away, we see 48% coming from one simple lead trap with projectiles. And he's not done yet, finally. K9 gets his stage control back. Right. And you know K9 is just looking for that edge guard, but you know Nitro very clean on his recovery, able to make it back on stage. But yet again, like how's K9 like getting off stage? And then unless like unless the Belmonts are super far off stage, where she can probably go for like a nair or fair off stage to just break their tether, they're probably not going to begin like that easily. But I like as that. as I say that, like he just goes out there with the bouncing fish and like gets a narrow super deep off stage. He got a very nice forward smash to cover the uh, tech roll and then he jumped off stage. And uh, now this is pretty much anyone's game. One simple combo, we can see uh, Sheik bring this back. And one ledge guard, this would be it. But no, nice up B, preemptive up B there. Right. No, just be like, oh, okay, get me out here, get me out here. Uh -oh. And he still has his tether, so he's fine. But And his jump, yeah, he's good. But K9 starting up here. This is this is the type of sheet gameplay you want to see. You gotta you gotta smother Belmont. And you know Belmont is super panic when they try to go for off stage for the edge guard. Sure. Okay, and he covers the air dodge in. Very nice ledge trap there from Nitro, taking game one to win it final. You, you could tell he was just looking for. If he was looking for the high recovery, he would have up aired, and he got the air dodge, so he got the forward air instead. Right. 
very nice stuff. And a lot of top players say that that, that directional air dodge in is just not smart in any instance. You, you want to go for a neutral air dodge, there's anything else. But uh, K9 still going for it there and getting punished. And he might have been able to survive that, but he DI'd. That DI was kind of sus. I mean, the only time you ever want a directional air dodge is if you know they're going to swing out a move. Sure. You and know? you know you could just get past it, like cross them up or something. But right there, not very good. And right back to PS2. That's really a great stage here. And again, Richter is just keeping Sheik in the corner, you know. Like, look at all that shield damage. Like, <laughs> oh my god. And it's like you have to respect it because if you don't shield it, you're, you're just going to get hit. And I respect saying with Sheik here, too. I just I want to say on paper Sheik can deal with this, but you gotta, you got to adapt. I don't think K9's played against Richter too much. But um, he's the type of player who should be able to adapt and do his best to not fall for the same tricks as game one. And right away, now we already see he has a slight percent lead, safe control. Yeah, I'd like to see him use uh, needles more because I feel like the Belmonts tend to lose the characters who can out project out camp them, basically, you know? So I feel like the needles would be able to kind of break the Belmonts, just like keeping them in the corner. Because if they want to be at like just outside of Ford Air range, so if you can like kind of interrupt them pressuring you with the needles, just like a quick like, hey, get off me, like actually approach or do I something, yeah. then maybe K9 can do a little bit better in his role. And the aerial needles off stage, that could be very annoying for Belmont, but definitely for sure. I, I think um, whenever K9 is struggling, he should charge up his needles and go from there. Definitely be a huge part of this matchup in the long run. Central gets the grab, goes for the axe, and yet again, so many projectiles that you have to worry about that you basically have to like thread the needle in for. Oof. Was that downward angle? Did that was downward angle, yep. So beautiful. Very nice stuff. Basically, you are, unless like, if you're anywhere like landing, downward angle That's is. It. Yep. Nice. Like, the downward angle is the best angle for the Belmonts because. They're able to hit grounded opponents from super far away. It just, it just straight up has more range than the regular fair. Nice. Yeah, I, pl I played against Nitro uh, a few months back. I literally lost to the aerials. I respect it because if I try to use Belmont right now, my, my angled aerials aren't going to be as smooth. You know? Definitely something you got to lab out a bit. I mean, yeah, I know like uh, a lot of things that I, like, I was interested in because I play a little bit of the Belmont is that. Uh, <laughs> You know, if you don't play on GameCube controller, you don't have the notches. Like, there are people that will make pro controllers that have the notches like built into the, the plastic. The ones that are specific to, to to like that angle that you want to throw it at, or just just the general like eight three angles. Okay. So like the the basically the GameCube angle. Okay, okay. Nice. Because and, and then and then you have the analog stick, like the pro controller analog stick, which is probably a little bit more responsive, right? Right. Makes sense. And again, here's a throw off stage. And I'm in trouble here. Did he catch it? Yeah, he caught it. <laughs> and he's going to actually convert it into a fair nair. Oh, he's going on with this train, but unfortunately, he's going to break it with a down air. Now, 145 Sheik will die to pull it, too. Yeah, um, I was not agreeing with that down air. But <laughs> I feel like he wanted, he was expecting him to throw out the holy water. He wanted to catch him with an aerial. Okay. And at that point, like, the only aerial that I can really do at that point was. It there, but Did you not see worth the it. way he reversed that? The, he, t he hit him with the holy water, and then he hit him with a reverse in air to hit him back towards the ledge. And now Nitro with full stage control up a stock. This is almost enough to kill Sheik if he if he can catch Sheik with something into a forward smasher. Oh, very nice tether down air. And again, Nitro's a, running with this game too right now. All right. You know, it's so hard to catch a Belmont when they have the lead. Because all their, because at that point they don't have to come in. Look at that tether grab range. That's just <laughs> insane. And that was probably, like you said, like an uh, angled one. So yep. The further range. Okay. Oh, like it's just so ridiculous how much like more range the angled fair has. Nitro definitely understands that. We're seeing some great recoveries right now. For Belmont to live to 140 percent for Sheik without getting gimped is impressive. Yeah. Here's the ledge grab option, and not getting anything off of it. 
Gets hit with the back air. Is he going to go for the edge guard? No, he's going to get hit by that Nair. That was really smart on Nitro, but gets sniped by that Bouncing Fish. But Sheik's at 160. A, a throw at the ledge. Yeah. Anything, basically, yeah, that should be it. Oh, no. Very nice from Nitro. K9 down 2-0 right now. Are we going to see the character switch? I think so. I mean, his Sheik wasn't doing bad. Not at all. Yeah. But yet again, I feel like for the other characters that he plays, he plays Lucina, he plays Wolf. Mm -hmm. Like, Lucina definitely doesn't have the speed needed to break Belt on. But Wolf, I mean, I can, I can see the Wolf pulling it out. And he's staying with Sheik, though. Oh, no, he got my Wolf. No, okay. he can't, he's pulling out the Wolf. Okay. All right, K9, down 2 0 right here. This is winner's final, so both of these players are guaranteed top three, but Nitro looking good. Richter Belmont. Definitely uh, giving these people some, some, some heartache here. Right. Let's see what the Wolf can do. And yet again, you know, just with a quick combo, he's already at 60%. Yeah. You know? I feel like that was the main difference between Wolf and Sheik is that you know, when Wolf gets in, like he does meaningful damage. You know? I feel like that was what K9 was struggling with throughout the matchup is that he was getting Richter up to 150, 160%, but just not cleaning out the kill quick enough. Yeah, no gimps. No, um, we didn't even see crazy 20, 30% combo. He was doing basic 15%, maybe 20%. Yeah. No up tilt things and you no know, reset. And yeah, again, those blasters allow for an actual projectile, like, say, like, hey, you can't just sit here and, like, throw a cross at me. I'm going to shoot you with my blaster. Yeah, like I said, I played against Nitro months ago. It's so cool to see his progression. His, his, his Richter is so smooth. It, it just looks like he's playing the character properly in so many different instances. Like, if you need somebody to study, be like, okay, how do I play against Richter? You watch, look up Nitro sets. Watch Nitro. Yeah. And it's funny, too, because I took game one versus him, and we talked to him. He was like, I think, you know, it seemed like you knew. Like, you just knew what to do. But then he adapted, and he went two, two and three. You know. And as for his Richter, it's probably pretty even. It's not like it's a crazy matchup. You know? I mean, I've, I've seen what Nitro has done to Lumbre, like... Oh, yeah, he knows the matchup, too. He plays against the best player. Yeah. So. Ooh, like, nice downward angled forward air. That is going to tie it up. Even after K9 takes the first dock, Nitro not letting him get any type of lead. Yet again, he's got him off stage, and... Yet again, opting to go for the... Try to catch the jump, but unfortunately throwing out the cross a little bit too late. I mean, you can tell a high, what a high caliber worker is because they don't just do cross into like uh, avoid water. They usually do cross into short hop and then they wait for whatever option you're going to pick. Usually, it's going to be fair or bear. Yeah, it's just those aerials right there. They, they're so scary. I mean, the way he's using the PS2 platforms, it just seems like he's very comfortable in the way this stage is laid out. And um, in these last two sets, we've seen Nitro get to go to PS2 a lot. He just seems in his comfort zone. K9 is not that I mean, the, quite fast enough yet. Yeah, the, the platforms also provide like a roof over his head, you know, because a plot of Richter's weaknesses is, you know, the, the overhead, like that 45 degree, like right above him. Sure. So, yet again, sitting underneath those platforms makes it a little bit harder for somebody to come in on top of Richter to punish his uh, options. Uh, kudos to Nitro being so comfortable on such a popular uh, stage. Because a player like K9 is like, oh, I'll go to PS2. I love PS2. But Nitro just seems to love it a little bit more. Nice parry. Not going to get the punish, though. But it's all right. Nitro is right now currently getting 67 extra credit. And uh, he should be able to come back to the back air. Air dodge? Is he going to be able to jump off stage? Oh, he, oh. he wanted the back air so much. But he realized that he probably couldn't be able to get it without dying. Right. And because of that, now Nitro gets the frame trap opportunity. Nice up smash, gonna punish that lift up B. But we've seen this time and time again. This is sufficient extra credit now. 98% on K9 on his winner's bracket stock. I mean, I wouldn't put K9 out of the match yet. I mean, all he needs is just one solid nair off stage to just get him. Nitro's been doing so well at just avoiding those bad situations. Meanwhile, K9 is in a terrible situation right now. This just looks miserable. Stop, why is that hitting? It's because he's at such a high percent, he loses his invincibility. This is it again, he doesn't. Oh my god. I mean, Nitro that, with back to back 3 0s makes it to Grand Final. I mean, that, that, that's, that's just horrible because, I mean, like, what do you do? <laughs> he it, can roll in, it, but that's about it. And then you can mean, get hit. I mean, rolling it. For, for what Richter was spacing it for, yeah. he was spacing it purposely so that, like, if he rolled in, he would get re-grabbed and just thrown back off stage. Oh, my gosh. 
So like, normally you, you try to hold the ledge a little bit longer because the holy water isn't going to hit you, but he's at such a high percent that he loses that ledge invincibility, and he just kept getting clipped, yeah. and it just kept recycling. And Nitro cruising, somewhat cruising into grand finals here at this 90-player uh, bracket. Very good job to him. We're going to move on to, I believe, some losers bracket matches. Right. So it looks like we have West versus Exax and then uh, Paper versus Rival. Okay. So probably one of those two matches are going to be played. Uh, looks like they're, looks like Wes is playing exact off stream right now. Cool. So we're going to run into a quick break. Um, we're going to go on a quick break. Yeah. yeah. Because we got to wait for uh, There's Paper and Rival. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're a little delayed in the loser's bracket. So All we're right. going to take a quick break. Uh, stick around, guys, as you see Nitro waiting in grand finals. But this loser's bracket is going to be kind of stacked. You got XX, you got K9. Um, I'm J Ribs. Thank you for listening and I'm watching. Kohai Tempo. We'll be back in a minute. Take it easy, guys.